Uh, good evening to all uh, dear brothers in Christ. Uh, we thank our God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, for giving it another opportunity to discuss his wonderful words of life. Uh, and last week, I uh, hope uh, we have seen the introduction class. And today, we're going to see how do we understand and study the Bible. Uh, so I request everybody uh, to open your Bibles and keep it ready and make notes of the uh, classes what we take. Any doubts, any questions you have, you can ask at the end of the class. We will be open for discussion. Anything you want to ask, you can definitely ask. Uh, dear brethren, the word uh, Bible, uh, Bible is from a Greek word called as Biblos, uh, which uh, means uh, actually a properly translated word means, uh, you see, the Bible. And it means uh, book. So what is there? In this uh, book, if you see, it is called uh, the Veda of uh, Truth. Bible is the only book, a very ancient and a very old book still existing. It's nearly more than uh, 4,000 years uh, old. And Bible can be divided into two parts, uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Old Testament has uh, 39 books and the New Testament has uh, 27 books. So how is this uh, Bible written? If you see, the Bible is not written by uh, human, uh, you see, words uh, or human wisdom. It is written by God's uh, Holy Spirit. God used uh, various uh, authors. Uh, nearly more than 40 authors have written the Bible during a span of nearly 1,700 years. And uh, how beautifully the authors have written the Bible. If you see, the author was spoken many years before and another author speaking about the same thing many years after, there is no contradiction at all. But there is a lot of a symmetric and a synchronizing and a harmonious between the two authors speaking about the same subject. So this itself is a clear proof that uh, without God's Holy Spirit, the Bible could not have written at all. It is given to us in Second Peter one twenty one. Can anybody of you read, brother? Second Peter one twenty one. Do you have the Bibles with you, Peter, brother? Can you read Second Peter two twenty one? Brother Peter, you are there online. Yes, yes, I am. Uh, brother, can you read the Bible, brother? Second Peter uh, one twenty one, brother. Second Peter one twenty one. Hmm. I have no light, so that can I read? Ah, read, brother, please, please. Second Peter one twenty one. Hmm. For prophecy never came by the will of men. But holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Very good, brother. So, uh, the prophecies of the Old Testament never came by, you see, the will of man, but by the Spirit of God. God has used various people through His Holy Spirit is motivated to write the Bible. And uh, the first page to be printed, uh, you see, printing press was invented, is uh, the Bible. And today, the most uh, printed uh, Bible, you see, the book is called uh, the Bible. And the most uh, published book, the most uh, translated book into all the languages of the world is the Bible. The Bible is the only book, you see. It is translated in all the languages. It is the most, you see, circulated book. It is the most uh, purchased uh, book. It is the most uh, read book. And not a related one, a very important thing is that uh, it is the most uh, misunderstood book also. Why? Why it is the most misunderstood book? If you see, uh, there is only one Bible, but today in the world, there is a lot of uh, denomination and a lot of misunderstanding. 
And uh, there are various ways the Bible used to use to read. Some people, you see, use the Bible to get sleep. Uh, many people, they don't get sleep. Uh. You see what they do? They keep on reading the Bible. So as soon as they read the Bible, you know, they get good sleep. Uh. So Bible, they use it for uh, sleeping purpose also. And some people, uh, some Christians uh, are so lazy that uh, they don't even read the Bible. They have the calendars where the verses is printed for each and every day. They just casually read that verse for the day and finish it saying, oh, this is the word of God which God has given to us today. So God has spoken us through this verse. And st still some people are quite better than other people. You see, they read that mana, daily mana book for each and every day. You see, each and every day. Uh, context is given, a paragraph is given. So, based on that one, uh, they will read uh, that one and finish it off uh, saying, This is what uh, God has uh, taught us today. But, dear brethren, there is also other ways to read the Bible also. If you purchase a new Bible, in the Bible Society itself, they give us a reading plan, the daily reading plan. If you read the Bible as for this one, daily two chapters in the Old Testament and daily one chapter in the New Testament, the entire Bible can be covered and completed in just a period of one year. So many people uh, would have done this one, you see, and uh, hope uh, here also, many people would have definitely read the Bible. I hope uh, you all three have read the Bible. You read the Bible, brother? Nehemiah, Peter, brother, and Sujesh, brother? Have you read the Bible completely? No, I haven't. Okay. How much till where you read? How many books have you read, brother? Ne Nehemiah, brother. How many books? Nehemiah, brother. Okay. Uh, five, six. Five, six. Five, six books. Okay. okay. So, you are Christians for, uh, from how many years, brother? I am 15 years. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, good. Peter, brother, how about you? Have you read the Bible completely? Peter, brother? I am not able to hear you. Yeah, this this year I am planning also. I have completed uh, four chapter. Good. You are Christian for uh, since how many years? I am 15, 16. 15 years. Oh, you are a believer for since 15 years. Good, good, good. Sujesh, brother, you are a believer since how many years? Uh, maybe 15. Okay. So, you read the Bible completely? Yes, but uh, by I read with a uh, uh, group, with group, not, oh, okay. not personally. Okay. So, you're doing the ministry work? You're doing the Lord's work? Yeah. Good. Okay. So, thank you. So, there are, you see, various denominations in this world. There's only one Bible. But today, if you see, there's a lot of uh, denominations in the Bible uh, based on the Bible. Methodist, Orthodox, Baptist, Presbyterian, CSI, Pentecost, Ceylon Pentecost. Uh, you see, uh, only Jesus, uh, Trinitarians, uh, Jehovah Witness, uh, uh, Adventist, uh, Presbyterian, uh, uh, Catholics, uh, various uh, types of people and denominations are there. But there is only one Bible. So, uh, how do we understand the Bible? Why there are so many denominations? Because these denominations are because of misunderstanding of so many things from the Bible. Like, for example, you see, Jesus said one words. Okay? What did Jesus say? Jesus said, it is difficult for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God than for a camel to enter into the needle side. You see? So let us read this verse, uh, Matthew 19, chapter 23 and 24, brother. Matthew 19, chapter 23 and 24. 
Sujesh, brother, can you read, brother? Do you have the Bible with you? Yes, I have got, I have now Nepali Bible. Okay. Read in Nepali, not a problem. Okay. Yeah. Year says 19, um, was 23 and 24. Oh. अनि येशुले आपना चेलार लाई भन्नु भयो साँचे म तिम्रो लाई भन्दछु स्वर्गको राज्यमा धनी मानिसलाई प्रवेश गर्नु गाह्रो पर्ने छ फेरि म तिम्रो लाई भन्दछु धनी मानिसलाई परमेश्वरको राज्य भित्र पस्नु भन्दा बरु उठलाई सियोको नाथीबाट छिर्नु सजिलो हुनेछ सो हियर इज ही जीसस सेस इट इज इजीयर फॉर अ कैमल टू गो टू द नीडल साइड how can a camel go through the needle side? You see, if the camel has to go through the needle side, then definitely the needle has to be so big. How can the camel go to your brother? In the needle side, you see, to just pierce a very thin thread, that itself is so difficult. Then, how can a camel go through it? See, so how do we understand this word, sir? What is the meaning of this word, sir? Is Jesus simply telling these words? No. When our Lord told, definitely there should be meaning. Okay. Next point. Genesis, second chapter. You see, God told Adam and Eve not to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But in the day you eat the fruit thereof, he said, you shall surely die. Okay. But uh, did Adam eat the fruit? Yes. And I made the fruit. But did he die the same day? Eh? Let us see, dear brethren. Adam did not die the same day. Okay? But Adam lived for a period of 930 years. How? How did he live? Then did God tell a lie? Like, for example, read Genesis 2nd uh, chapter 16 and 17, brother. Genesis 2nd chapter 16 and 17. Uh, Santosh Pariyar. Samiksha, brother, welcome. Can you, any of you read, brother? Samiksha, brother, or uh, Santosh, Oh, sister, sorry. Sorry. Samiksha, sister, good evening. Santosh, brother, Jai Masi. Jai Masi, good evening. Good evening, sister. Sister, can you read the Bible? You have the Bible with you? Okay. Uh, anybody having the Bible, they can read. The Santosh Pariyar, Nehemiah. Okay. Can I read the Bible? Please, brother, please. And the Lord God commanded the men, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. 17. Hmm. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. See, God told, in the day you eat, you shall surely die. In that day. Same day you shall die. Seems. But did uh, Adam die the same day? No, dear brother. Adam lived for a period of 930 years. You see, Genesis 5.5. Read brother. Genesis 5.5. Can you one of you read? Sujesh, brother, or... Uh, yes. uh, please, brother, please. And all the days that Adam lived were nine, 930 years, and he died. See, Adam lived for a period of 930 years, and uh, he died. Then, why did not uh, Adam die the same day? What is the meaning of it? So many people tell that uh, Adam died spiritually. He says he died spiritually, but physically, bodily, he died at the end of uh, end of an end of thirty years. Dear brother, okay, if let us consider like this only, if Adam had to die spiritually, you see, that means you should be a spiritual person to die. Huh? Then only he can die spiritually. If he's not a spiritual person, he can't die spiritually. Correct now? So. 
Let us read what does the Bible say, how Adam was created. 1 Corinthians 15 chapter 46 and 47, brother. Samiksha, sister, can you read? You have the Bible with you? Uh, brother Raju. I have in Nepali, is that okay? Okay. Okay, if you can read Nepali also. Okay, not a problem. So anybody else can read. Yeah, first Corinthians 15, 46 and 47, it's in Nepali. Poilo man is 46 and 47, sorry. Yeah. Poilo chai atmi koina tara prakriti ko ra tes pachi chai atmi ko. Poilo man is matole boni eko piti batao, dosro man is sol ho. Okay, so here it clearly says that the spiritual was not first. You see, natural was the one first. What does it mean? The meaning is given in verse 47 that the first man, Adam, was from the earth. And the second man was from the Lord, from heaven. That means the first man, Adam, was created a earthly, you see, a human being of the earthly nature. He was created naturally and he was never created spiritually. But spiritual was our Lord Jesus Christ from heaven. So, if Adam is not created spiritually, how can he die spiritually? Dear brethren, Adam was disfellowshipped from God. That is a different thing than dying. Here God clearly said about, you don't eat the fruit thereof. If you eat, you shall die. He never told that uh, you shall be disfellowshipped. No. Dear brother, why did not Adam die the same day? Okay. Now, let us read Matthew 13 chapter, verse 12 and 13, brother. Matthew 13 chapter, verse 12 and 13. See you, sir. Ah, it was Santosh Sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, how can you prove that there was Jesus Christ? Hmm. What What is the reason by that there was a Jesus Christ who had created yeah. the heaven and the earth? What What is the reason behind that? How can we believe that? We is will. We will see the answer later, brother. We will see the answer in the class. That's what we are studying. We are just seeing yeah. this now. So later on, yeah. we will see the answer. Yeah. Uh, all right. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Can you read, brother? Matthew 13, 12. Can you read, Santosh, brother? Ma Matthew? 13, 12. Matthew 13. Hmm. Uh, let, let me try. Okay. Hmm. So, sir, it's taking too, too long time. Yeah, I think I got it. Matthew 13 to L. Hmm. Please forgive me for the delay. Can I read the Bible? Uh, please, brother. Yes, yeah, sure, sure, sir. For whoever has to him more will be given, and he will have abundance. But whoever doesn't have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Mm -hmm. You see, what does this verse say? Who has to him more will be given, it seems. But whosoever doesn't have, even that which is he having, that will also be taken from him. It seems. How can this be? You see, God is not partial, doesn't do partiality. 
he should actually be giving the person who doesn't have anything or uh, he should be giving to the person who has only less but instead here uh, our lord is saying uh, who to those who have more more will be given it and to those who have less even that which he has that shall be taken this is uh, not fair enough, dear brother, and this seems to be very partial. How do we understand the Bible? You see, these are the questions, uh, you see, <coughs> that are misunderstood from the Bible. Okay? Now... Can I, can, I, can I ask you a question, sir? Brother, one minute. We will complete the class. So, at the end of the class, you can definitely ask any of your questions. We are open for discussion. Okay? Yeah, sure, sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please listen. Make the yes. notes. Any doubts you yeah. come, write it in a book. You can definitely yeah. ask at the last person. Yeah, definitely. Good. Thank you. So therefore, say, such type of points, there are many in the Bible. That is the reason, if you see, the Bible is the most misunderstood book. It is not only the most translated and the most sold book, but also the most misunderstood. That is the reason there are so many denominations in this world. And how do we understand this Bible? Dear brethren, if we have any questions, we should ask our Lord Jesus Christ. What did Jesus say? Matthew 7:7? 7, 7, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. So what we should do? Ask from the Lord. The answers from the Lord. What should we seek? We should seek the answers from our Lord. And we should knock our Lord's door in prayer. Then what will God do? He will open the Bible for us, dear brethren. So, to understand the Bible, first of all, we need to remember one thing. That Bible is a locked book. See, not literal lock. The inner meaning, the in-depth meaning in the Bible, not everybody can understand. Only without God's Holy Spirit, nobody can understand the Bible. See, Bible can be read. You can read the Bible, but understanding the Bible is very, very uh, difficult. Without God's Holy Spirit, nobody can understand the Bible. Therefore, to unlock this Bible, we need proper keys. You see? So, to unlock the Bible, there are actually three important keys. Now, what are there? What are the three important keys? That is the first key, Isaiah 34, 16, brother. Isaiah 34, 16. Can anybody read? Santosh, brother, can you read? Okay, anybody else? Sujesh brother. Peter brother, Nehemiah brother. Hmm. Read brother, Sujesh brother, read. Yes, yeah, shall I read from your uh, note? Oh, please. Yeah. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of the these shall fail. Uh, none shall want her met. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath uh, gathered them. Ah, so the first key is to how do we read the Bible? How do we study the Bible? Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. Any questions you have. We need to seek the answer only from the Bible and read. What do you say? None of these shall fail. That means the Bible has answer for all the questions in the Bible. None shall want her mate. Mate means what? You see? Mate means what? A couple. You see? The male and female are called a couple. So mate means what? You see? Always there is a companion. Always there is a link verse, uh, you see. Like for example, you see, uh, for north, uh, the south is the, you see, link. Uh, 
and uh, for east uh, west is the link for negative the positive is the link similarly for all the questions in the bible you see the answer aha uh -huh. that is the meta in the bible that is the link so all the links for all the questions all the answers for all the questions are there in the bible you see and this has to be gathered sorted out from the bible and how do we do it verse says the spirit will gather it through god's holy spirit you see we can gather all the verses the brother understand the bible so the first key the second key is a 28 9 and 10 I the twenty eight chapter nine and ten. Nehemiah brother, can you read? Okay, sir. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand, Doctor Ryan? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For percept must be open percept, percept open percept, line open line, line open line. Here a little and there a little. I mean, uh -huh. see, here the answer is given. Whom shall the Lord teach Bible, the knowledge? Whom shall he make to understand the doctrine? You see, it says them that are weaned from the milk. drawn from the breast uh, how shall god teach uh, precept upon precept uh, precept upon precept uh, line upon line line upon line here a little there a little so second key is here a little there a little we need to understand how do we study the bible bible has to be studied here a little there a little this is the second key okay now third key How where is it given? Second Timothy two fifteen, brother. Second Timothy two fifteen. Ah, uh, Peter, brother, can you read? We can read from the screen also, brother. I will read. It's okay. It's very easy to read, I guess. Study to show thyself approved to God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Sorry, sorry. Study to show themselves approved unto God, a workman that uh, needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Aha! Uh -huh. Rightly dividing the word of God. See. The word of God has to be divided properly. Means, means what? It has to be linked properly. Here a little, there a little. So, with using these keys, let us see the answer for the three questions which we read now. The first question: What would you say? How can a camel enter the needle side? This is really impossible at all. So, what is the meaning of this one? Why did Jesus? Uh, Give this example, dear brethren. You see, during the days of our Lord Jesus Christ, we all know that Jerusalem was a fortress city. You see, it was built upon the Mount Zion. You see, and this fortress had twelve gates. It is given to us in the book of Nehemiah: fish gate, sheep gate, goat gate. You see, a valley gate, golden gate. the various uh, gates were there and these gates used to be closed by 6 pm in the night why because of the danger of uh, thieves coming inside so they closed that big gate uh, after uh, 6 pm in the evening and how do the people travel how do the people go inside the city to travel after 6 pm a small gate was opened in that big gate and a small gate was called as a needle's eye you see dear brethren so that small door was actually called as a needle's eye then why did jesus refer that to the camel because 
In olden days, the rich people always used to travel on camel, the poor people on the donkey. Therefore, you remember Jesus came to Jerusalem on a donkey. You see, the judges uh, in the book of Judges, they all traveled on a donkey. But the kings, rich people, Abraham, Job, everybody, they all on a donkey, huh? camel. So, a rich person traveling to a far country, he won't come empty handed, but he would bring all the luggage. Whatever he requires, he'll bring it upon a camel. And imagine if he comes to Jerusalem after 6 p.m., the door will be closed. He can't take the camel and go inside because he has to go through the small needle eye door. So, can the camel pass through it? No. What he has to do first? He has to unload the camel. You see, take off all the load from the camel, then take the camel on the side, again carry the load and load on the camel and go. But will a rich man do this one? No. He used to never do this one. Why simply take risk? He would uh, usually sleep uh, in an inn that was outside Jerusalem. And when the morning the used door was open, he would go easily. Jesus was referring to this one only. It is very difficult for a rich man to go to this little lie. Camel will go. You just remove the load, it will go aram se go. No problem. No problem at all. But for the rich man to unburden all his responsibilities, it is a very, very difficult task. Therefore, Jesus was ready referring to that small gate in Jerusalem. This is how we read the Bible. Hear a little, hear a little. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. You say rightly dividing the word of God. Okay. Now, what is the answer for the second question? Why did not Adam die the same day? You see, Adam was disfellowshipped. Okay, he was cut off from fellowship from God. But doesn't mean that uh, Adam was, uh, you see, spiritually cut off. He did not have God's Holy Spirit. It was God's Holy Spirit in him. If God's Holy Spirit was there, he would never sin. Then why did not Adam die the same day? Why did he live for a period of 9, 30 years? Because... Uh, the one who told Adam not to eat the fruit was our Lord Jesus Christ. We all know very well that uh, for our Lord Jesus Christ, one day means how many years? Uh, means a period of thousand years. Actually, what Jesus was saying to Adam here is that don't eat the fruit thereof. You see, in the day you eat the fruit thereof, what will happen now? You shall surely die means in the thousand year day. Because for our Lord, one day is a thousand years. So he was actually mentioning for a period of thousand years. So if you eat the fruit thereof, you shall die within thousand years. Therefore, if you see in the Bible, none of the people lived above thousand years. Everybody lived before thousand years only. Adam 939, Metro for the maximum for 969. But nobody was living above thousand years. And uh, dear brethren, Adam was surely cut off uh, from God's uh, presence. Uh, he was cast out from the Garden of Eden. But uh, he did not die the same day. He took 930 years uh, to die. Therefore, this is how we read the verse. See, the question to in the book of Genesis the answer to that, it is given in uh, 2 Peter 3rd chapter. See, read uh, 2 Peter 3, 8, brother. 2 Peter 3, 8, can uh, read. Santos, brother, can read 2 Peter 3, 8. But be love, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Okay, one day with the Lord is as a thousand years. So one day in that day, in that day means for us it is thousand years. Therefore, nobody lived above the period of a thousand years. Everybody died within a thousand years. Okay, here a little, here a little. Rightly dividing the word of God. You see, seeking from the Bible the answers. Okay, now what is the answer for the third question? Whosoever has, to him more will be given. 
Whosoever doesn't have, even that which is having shall be taken off his ships. Now, this verse seems to be very, you see, partial and uh, doing injustice to the poor. You see, we, actually, we usually think the poor should be given more, the rich should be given less. But here God says, to him that has, I'll give more. Huh? Isn't that partiality, dear brethren? How do we read the Bible? Use the three keys. Uh, first, uh, search from the Bible. Here a little, there a little. Rightly divided in the word of God. Now, to search the answer for this one, we need to read just two verses before. That means, read uh, tenth verse. The answer is given from there only. Matthew 13, 10, brother. Matthew 13, 10, brother. Can anybody read with her? Matthew 13, 10. Sujesh, brother. Okay, Matthew 13, 10. Ah. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speak this though unto them in parables? Continue. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Mm. See, Jesus was actually speaking a parable. You see, dear brethren? So, here, when he spoke parables, the disciples questioned him, Lord, why do you always speak in parables, sir? And to that question, Jesus is giving the answer here, dear brethren. He is not uh, answering uh, any other thing. He is not uh, telling some other thing, but he is answering the disciples' questions. What was the question of the disciple? Why are you speaking in parables, sir? To that, what did Jesus say? I speak in parables so that it is given to you to understand, not to everybody. So everybody can't understand. That's what he's trying to say. Why can't everybody understand? Why only a few people understand? What is the answer for it? Now read brother. Continue brother. Continue Ashish brother from where you stopped. Okay. Verse 12. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance, but whosoever ah. hath not, ah. to him shall be taken away even that he had. Ah. To that question only Jesus is saying, why can't I understand? Because to him who has more shall be given. So, of course, this itself is a clear proof that Jesus was never speaking about money at all. He was speaking about the interest, the zeal, to understand more about God and more about the Bible. Only for those people, you see, Jesus spoke in parables, or only those may understand. So, Jesus was trying to say, no, why not uh, everybody understands the Bible? Why? Because they don't have that zeal and interest. They don't have that, uh, you see, curiosity to know more about the Bible. You see, dear brethren, therefore it is given unto you to know the mystery of the kingdom of uh, heaven. That means the secret in the Bible is given, not everybody, but only to few people. Who people? Which people? Those who have interest. So them more truth will be given. But those who don't have interest, even that which uh, little bit of interest they have, that also shall be gone. Okay, this is how we study the Bible. Here a little, there a little. Seeking from the Bible, search the Bible, rightly dividing the word of God. Therefore, you see, uh, there are 10 methods to actually understand the Bible. 10 languages you can see. See, how do we study the Bible? See, this is not Bible reading. We are not doing Bible reading, but we are doing the Bible study. Okay? There are 10 methods to study the Bible. Okay? Uh, the first study among them is the direct language. Direct language means what, uh, you see, God told, it means the same. There is no inner meaning, there is no some other meaning, no. Like, for example, the Bible says that Jesus wept. Jesus wept means Jesus wept. You see, there's nothing uh, inner meaning in that one. There's nothing uh, symbolic or deep meaning in that one. 
that's a direct language that this is the first uh, and the second uh, language in the bible is a symbolic language symbolic language means what it says it is never the same meaning the meaning is altogether different that's what we saw right camel entering the needle's eye you said you how can a camel enter needle's eye this is not a literal statement but this is a symbolic uh, language so this is a sign language where we need to decode each and every you see words and understand it use the proper key symbolic language dear brethren in book of revelation full of symbols you see that is also symbolic language the third second you see language the third language is parabolic language you see bible speaks about so many parables ha huh? we are we are now jesus speaking about a parable the parable of uh, you see a good shepherd you see the parable of the good samaritan the parable of the sower ha huh? we see you no know, ha huh? a sower went and sowed his seed among four grounds it were fell into different types of uh, a ground and gave uh, different results it fell on the wayside and uh, immediately the sparrow came and uh, you see uh, birds came and uh, took it away that is jesus was referring to the satan as soon as god's words is being heard immediately satan will do his activity and take out the understanding of the bible so later on it went to the fell into the uh, stone because of no roots immediately it uh, withered away then the third way is the third one it fell on a uh, uh, thorns in midst of the thorns uh, it was uh, actually growing good but because of the thorns he choked it uh, that jesus the first uh, uh, you see uh, uh, concern of the worldly affairs uh, the more uh, you concentrate on the world you can't concentrate on god but the fourth ground is a good ground that gave good results that's a good heart condition we need to receive god's word this is a parabolic language dear brethren so parabolic language has to be studied in a parabolic way only then only we come to understand uh, now next language is type and antitype so type and antitype means what so type and antitype means all the things written in the old testament were just a shadow of what of all the things that were supposed to come in the new testament like for example see abraham sacrificed his only son correct na no? isaac but what did god do immediately isaac was given back to abraham what does this represent this represents our heavenly father giving his son as a sacrifice to the world but uh, did jesus go away like that only no he was resurrected back you see dear brethren therefore in the old testament ha huh? read uh, colossians second chapter 16 and 17 colossians second chapter 16 and 17 let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the sabbath days hmm continue uh, brother your voice is not heard verse 17 also brother which are a shadow of things to come but the body is of christ see which are a shadow of things to come shadow all the things which are written of our time it's a shadow of the things to come in new testament okay so even the tabernacle you see this all got a meaning this is the fourth language now the fifth language is dreams and visions see god has given so many dreams so many visions joseph he saw a dream now king pharaoh he saw a dream jacob saw a dream god meaning all these things have got a meaning so we will see all these things uh, uh, in the future so the bible has to bred in this uh, angle itself uh, and the sixth way 
understand the Bible is the dispensational truth. That means uh, past, present, future. You see, there are past uh, tense, uh, present tense, and a future tense uh, in the Bible. You see, brethren. So past uh, tense has to be read in that way only. The present tense, in the present tense. Future means it's going to happen in the future. So you can't take the future tense verse and apply to now. You can't take the past, uh, you see, uh, tense verse and apply to the future. So you need to apply it properly. Like for example, marriages. A Christian, how many times can he marry? Tell me, how many times a man can marry? One time. One time, very good. That is now. But before, during the days of Moses, multiple marriage was permitted. So that is the past. Just keeping the past, you can't tell that we are going to marry multiple times. That is wrong. So, in past, you see, a period was there where multiple marriages were allowed. That was the past. Now, only one marriage. So what about the future? What about the future? In the coming age, will there be marriage? Will there be marriage, brother? Hmm? If you see, there won't be marriage at all. Read Matthew 22, 30, brother. Matthew 22, 30, brother. Santosh, brother, can you read Matthew 22, 30? Okay. Uh, Nehemiah, brother, can you read? Okay, sir. Hmm. For in the res res uh, resurrection, resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Aha, uh -huh. you see, it says, for in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage. There is no marriage at all in the coming age, dear brethren. So that is the sixth one. The seventh one is a prophetic language. See, a lot of prophecies in the Bible that has to be read in the prophetic language itself. Like, for example, Genesis 3.15 is the first prophecy in the Bible. That the seed of the woman shall bruise the serpent head. Now, what is the meaning of serpent? What is the meaning of the seed of the woman? Why it will come and bruise the serpent's head? Serpent means who? All those things have to be read in a particular a prophetic style itself. Good. Now, eighth one is a contextual study. Context study means just we can't take any verse and build up a story. We should never do it. But we need to see the context. A verse before, a verse later, what actually it's trying to speak. Then come to a conclusion, dear brethren. So this is the context you study. Huh? And a nine is chronological method. What do you mean by chronological method? There are a lot of time calculations, a lot of dates given in the Bible. So we need to study it uh, that way only. Like for example, what does the Bible say about uh, creation of man? How many years uh, uh, since that man was created? You see? But today you go and ask the scientist, uh, what is the reply? They say that uh, man was created thousands of years ago. Go on. Thousands means what? Uh, millions, millions, trillions of years ago. Then he evolved from a amoeba, a protozoa, monkey, chimpanzee, and a gorilla, and he slowly developed and become a human being. Eh? Darwin's theory. You know? Dear Budren. How do we study this one? So there is a particular method to study this one also. And the last one, the tenth one, is very, very important. Is the topic of one. Topical study means what? Gather all the verses on a, based on a particular topic and start understanding, studying the Bible. So this way, we study all the things will be very clear to us. It is what we are going to do in the coming days. Study the Bible topically, topic upon topic. Every week we're going to select and see what the Bible says about God's plan for mankind. Therefore, dear brethren, so the tenth uh, study. So, how do we gather all the verses? If you see, dear brethren, no need to go to a library. Today we have the blessed uh, 
you see advantage of uh, concordances we can download it from them and see the list of all the verses on a particular incident like for example you see jesus uh, where he was born where he grew and where he died is not given in a single chapter or single uh, book of the bible is given in the entire bible here little there little you see seek out the book of lord rightly apply then only will come to the understanding therefore what did you say john 8:32 know the truth and the truth shall make you free so understanding the bible is very very important so what did we see today the three keys to unlock the bible you see first search from the bible second is uh, here little here little and the third is uh, you see rightly dividing the word of god so does anybody uh, remember the 10 methods brother which are the 10 methods first one is which one you can tell santosh brother tell me which is the first method this is direct language very good second one symbolic language Sim good ah uh, name me tell me third one parabolic language very good ah uh, fourth one pa tell me. parabolic language very good fourth one type and anti type okay that is old testament comparing with the new testament okay fifth one dreams uh, visions and vision stage very good then sixth one dispensational truth ah very good past present future ah. yeah prophetic language, language. Ah, yes prophecy has got a language and uh, context method ah, just take a verse and not build a story ah, build a subject based on the verses the city of then then chronological the last of all the topical study so if you study the bible like this way we won't miss an instruction to study uh, so uh, <clears throat> the topical study is a very important study and from the coming days coming uh, next week we are going to systematically see topical study one by one one by one what the bible says or god plan okay dibran so uh kindly go through the notes and the youtube link which i'm going to send any questions or any doubts you have you can definitely ask us at uh, uh, any time uh, 